April 27, 2018, a day that history was made. 65 years after the end of hostilities, the leaders of North and South Korea held a remarkable summit. After the historic meeting, South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un committed themselves to the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. After weeks of improving relations, things have now taken a sudden step backwards, with Pyongyang calling off a planned high-level meeting with Seoul. North Korea's cancellation of the meeting came as South Korea and the U.S. began conducting annual Air Force drills, a move Pyongyang slammed as, quote, a deliberate military provocation. The number one provocation and problem that North Korea has always had is the U.S. and South Korea's joint military drills where they do mock invasions of the North. And then just a month before the next meeting, or well, days before the meeting in the DMZ, what do they do? They have a military exercise with F-22s and B-52s that can carry nuclear weapons. The one thing the North asked them not to do is exactly what they did. North Korea said the exercises were against the declaration signed last month between the Koreas, wherein they agreed to seize all hostile acts against each other. <music> Meanwhile, the military drills by the U.S. and South Korea have cast a cloud over a June 12 summit between North Korea's leader and U.S. President Donald Trump. A North Korean official said the government would reconsider the planned talks if the U.S. insists on pushing it, quote, into a corner on nuclear disarmament. Pyongyang's throwing the summit into doubt came a day after Trump's national security adviser, John Bolton, described the complete and irreversible denuclearization of North Korea as the meeting's objective. Such comments were later echoed by Trump himself. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Time will tell. Thank you very much, everybody. Despite Trump's bold gesture, the White House and State Department said they were hopeful about the planned summit. After all, the cancellation of such an historic meeting would deal a blow to Trump as he has repeatedly been boasting of North Korea's conciliatory language, linking it to his administration's policy of applying maximum pressure. U.S. President's National Security Advisor John Bolton, known for his hawkish views, has suggested that discussions with North Korea should be similar to those that led to the total denuclearization of Libya in 2004. But abandoning the country's nuclear program did not bode well for former Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi, who was toppled several years later by the West. His fate was a salutary lesson to North Korea, with the country's first vice minister of foreign affairs deriding Bolton's suggestions as, quote, absurd. Kim kai Guan also reminded that North Korea was a nuclear weapons state, while Libya had been at the initial stage of nuclear development. North Korea's dramatic reversal in tone from recent months came a week after the U.S. president's much-criticized withdrawal from the Iran nuclear deal. As you saw one president, Obama, make an extremely long international deal involving many European nations and China with Iran, and then the next guy just comes in and cancels it. So what kind of long-term deal can you have with the United States? A decision that sent a clear message to Pyongyang and once again showed Washington's total disregard for international law. <laughs>